In this video, we'll look at the type of bonds for H2O, that's water. Probably the first thing we should do is draw a Lewis structure for water here. And we can do that. We have hydrogen is in group one on the periodic table. It has one valence electron. There are two hydrogen atoms. And then oxygen, group 16 or 6A, it has six valence electrons. So we have eight valence electrons. So when we draw the Lewis structure, we would put oxygen in the middle and then hydrogen. That always goes on the outside. So we have eight valence electrons, put two between the atoms. That forms the bond. And then we still have two more pairs. So we've used four and we need eight. Put those there and here. So now we have an octet for the oxygen. Hydrogen only needs two. This is a good Lewis structure for water, for H2O. We draw a Lewis structure because we have two nonmetals. And when you have two nonmetals, you'll have a covalent bond. It's also called a molecular bond. So the type of bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen here and then over here, that's a covalent or molecular bond because we have two nonmetals, the H and the O. These electrons here, they're called lone pairs or non-bonding pairs of electrons. They're just there. They have their own shape and orbital, but they're not bonded to anything. So we have a Lewis structure for water. So let's take a look at the shape of the molecule and talk about polarity because it is a covalent bond but it's a polar covalent bond, and that's important to understand. So here is our oxygen molecule that's in the center, and we can add the two hydrogens. So now we have H2O. This would be the O, and these are the H's. At this point, it looks like we have a linear structure here, but don't forget those lone pairs. We said they actually occupy space. So here's one of them. You can see how everything spreads out, pushes apart, and here's the other one. So water ends up having this bent molecular geometry because we have the lone pairs here. They occupy space. They push it down. So water bent molecular geometry. Let's hide the lone pairs. Talk about polarity. Oxygen is very electronegative. That means that it'll pull the electrons towards it more than the hydrogen atoms would. That results in this having kind of more electrons around it more of the time. Gives it a bit of a negative charge. That means these will be positive. We call it polar because we have a positive pole and a negative pole. And that has important implications for how water molecules will behave when they're near other water molecules. Let's take a look at that. So we're looking at this water molecule right here, the so oxygen and the hydrogen. So we said the hydrogens, they're a little bit positive. So here's a little bit of a positive here. And the oxygen kind of has a little bit of a negative charge. So put a negative here so you just so you can see those. And you can see the positive here is kind of matching up with the negative. That's the hydrogen bond. Here we have the negative, that's matching up with this positive. So the hydrogen bond, it's a very weak bond, but because water is polar, it kind of holds the water molecules together. That's why you have surface tension or a relatively high boiling point for water. It's because these hydrogen bonds, which aren't real strong, but there are quite a few of them, they kind of hold the water and make it stick together. So we've talked about several types of bonds. We've talked about the covalent bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen, and we've also talked about the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. So these are important things to understand about the water molecule and the types of bonds that we'll find to be associated with it. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.